on board the International Space Station at this hour as it travels uh, over eastern China, about to begin a northwest to southeasterly uh, course across the Pacific Ocean in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. You see Garrett Reisman, the newly arrived uh, flight engineer, uh, joining uh, Commander Peggy Whitson and uh, Yuri Malenchenko, uh, the flight engineer, uh, who will serve uh, just 11 days from now as the Soyuz commander for the return to Earth by Whitson, Malenchenko, and So Yun Yi. Uh, they are, are actually watching a NASA television feed that is being uplinked to them so that they can have an opportunity to watch the launch of the Soyuz uh, spacecraft carrying uh, their successors uh, to orbit uh, that will occur just 26 minutes from now at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 5.16 p.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where uh, all of the countdown preparations are continuing on track for today's launch. For Whitson and Malenchenko, this is their 181st day in space, their 179th day aboard the International Space Station. For Garrett Reisman, he's wrapping up four weeks in orbit, 26 days on board the station since he was delivered into orbit aboard the shuttle Endeavour on the STS-123 mission uh, back in March. Reisman will remain on board the International Space Station until June with Volkov and uh, Kononenko once they complete their handover uh, from Whitson and Malenchenko, a handover that over the course of the next uh, week and a half will include um, robotics training, uh, basically uh, station uh, systems familiarization, an opportunity uh, to uh, have Volkov and Kononenko get acquainted with the uh, massively expanded International Space Station that now enjoys more volume than ever before, almost 60 percent of the station now having been completed. And back on board uh, the Soyuz TMA-12, uh, you see on the right uh, side of your screen flight engineer Oleg Kononenko, the 43-year-old test cosmonaut of RSC Energia, who was born in Chardzau in Turkmenia, educated at the Kharkov Aviation Institute as a mechanical engineer. Uh, to his right, on the left side of your screen, is uh, the commander for Expedition 17, Sergei Volkov, 35-year-old Russian Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, born in Chugayev in the Kharkov region of Ukraine, a second-generation cosmonaut, the son of famed Russian cosmonaut Alexander Volkov. Mission Control Moscow, SG-1, for the visiting crew, program Tega. This footage now uh, was uh, shot earlier this morning. You see in the foreground Valentina Tereshkova, who was the first woman to fly in space in 1963. A short time from now, just 23 minutes from now, So Yun Yi, at the age of 29, will become the youngest woman ever to fly in space. You see her parents uh, watching her suit up today in the Site-254 integration and assembly facility at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The uh, crew uh, arrived uh, to begin their suit-up procedures about 1.30 Central Time uh, this morning. A large uh, crowd of well-wishers uh, on hand. Uh, following uh, the suit-up, uh, the crew uh, made its way in the traditional walk towards uh, their greeting uh, to uh, the head of the State Commission uh, before boarding uh, the bus under clear skies uh, behind uh, Sergei Volkov, 
Valerie Corzoon, who was the Expedition 5 commander along with Peggy Whitson back in 2002. And you see final uh, well wishes and uh, greetings and waves uh, to the uh, assembled uh, media and officials uh, at, outside the Site-254 integration facility at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan as the crew then made its way onto the bus to head to the launch pad. As you watch uh, this footage uh, that uh, was fed uh, a short time ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan showing uh, the crew uh, boarding the bus to head to the launch pad. Uh, just one uh, issue uh, that is being monitored, uh, which is of no consequence at this point, uh, one of the zippers on the uh, launch and entry suit, the Sokol suit for Sergei Volkov, broke during uh, the final pressurization of the suit on board the Soyuz uh, TMA-12 this morning. Uh, the inner bladder uh, began bulging out of the area in which the zipper broke. However, uh, the leak checks uh, that were performed uh, are good, and the countdown proceeds uh, uneventfully now for launch in just 21 minutes. You see at the uh, launch pad now uh, the crew uh, in its uh, final farewell to the well-wishers as they began to ride the elevator up to the uh, crew portion uh, where they uh, climbed inside the very tiny Soyuz TMA-12 uh, to begin to strap in for final pre-launch checks and preparations for liftoff that is scheduled less than 21 minutes from now at 6.16 a.m. Central Time. The uh, wake-up time will be at 10.20. And Back inside uh, the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev, outside Moscow, as uh, flight controllers uh, now are watching uh, this close-up view of the uh, Soyuz booster on the launch pad. Once again, uh, the Soyuz rocket standing 168 feet tall, weighing 680,000 pounds at launch, ready to lift off less than 20 minutes from now to carry the next residents to the International Space Station. Do you have questions now? Uh, April 12th, we plan uh, to conduct the handover. And in the nearest future, today or tomorrow, we'll uplink the uh, radiogram on board with our recommendations on the handover. And for each day where handovers will be scheduled, we'll be planning the specifics for these activities. And also, when you Down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, uh, a large contingent of uh, officials from the government of South Korea, along with the uh, Korean Aviation Research Institute, which was the sponsoring agency for the commercial agreement with the Russian Federal Space Agency that enabled uh, So Yun Yi to be uh, chosen uh, to fly in space uh, to the International Space Station for her nine days on board the complex. The NASA delegation down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome today, led by Phil Cleary, the Director of Human Spaceflight Operations in Russia. The Russian Federal Space Agency is uh, represented by Anatoly Permanov, the head of Roscosmos.